Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're creating this insane effect inside Figma. This is called pointillism. And pointillism is about these little points being animated all across with different shapes. It could be a shape of a car, it could be a shape of a person's face, it could be anything. We have two effects that we're going to be working on. One is obviously the transitions. And the second one is this nice little hover animation I created with these nice little points for text. It could be for illustrations. Anything you want, you can utilize these methods to create whatever you like. And all of this we'll be doing for free in Figma in less than 10 minutes. So let's just get started. All right, so for the first effect, I'll be bringing three images of three different cars. We have three Porsches right here. The Cayenne, the Panamera, and the 911. Now, these are cars that I've downloaded from Porsche's website, and I've used the background remove tool inside Figma, which you can find here called remove background to remove the backgrounds of each one of them. Make sure that their background is removed. You can always use a free tool like remove BG, which can do the same thing in case you don't have access to Figma's features. Now, once this is done, converting this into a point art or a pointillism is very easy. Just go to this little magic icon or this action icon right here. Go to plugins and widgets and search for tillism. Very simple. You The first one that pops up is, is this one right here with this black icon. Click on this and almost immediately you find this little interface pop up. Once again, you don't have to sign in or download anything. It's right here in Figma. I have selected this car and it automatically converts this car into this pointillism effect, which is so cool. Now, to change this, I can even do things like color. So if your car is in a certain color, like red, blue, green, it will show up in that particular color. For now, we want to stick to either black and white or monochromatic. It gives that nice little effect. You can even select between grid and chess. So chess is a little more jumbled back and forth like this. And if you want something a little more standard and, and good for your layout, then the grid is always going to work out for you. Now, now to make sure that this works well in Figma, you want fewer dots or fewer points. So we're going to increase the grid size to 15 or 16. As long as the car is recognizable, it should be good to go. I think 15 is fine for us and we can increase or decrease the size of these little circles. We don't want something very big that it looks too obnoxious. I think 8 and 15 is fine here. I can then go, go ahead and click on add to Figma and this will add it to Figma. As you can see, a perfect replica, almost a perfect replica of this car is here. Okay, now you have to do the exact same thing for all three of these cars or any car that you have downloaded and you and utilize the same plugin with the same settings. Don't change the settings, otherwise this effect will get messed up. What I mean by that is choose the same grid size, which is 15 and choose the same size shape, which is 8 and then add to Figma. Don't change any one of the settings. And for now, we have these three nice little shapes for all three cars right here. Now you can place each one of these inside an actual web frame so you can even, so you can set the dimensions to whatever it could be for web, whatever it is. You can always choose a background from Unsplash or anywhere which kind of has this nice little road and just shift this frame onto this road like so. Make sure that the fill is removed from the right here remove the frame and now you have a nice little transparent background with this car. You can always give a background of black and reduce the opacity of the background so that the car is in view like this. To change the size of the car, make sure you press K on your keyboard and from here you change the dimensions. So for now I'm going to change the dimensions to 800. So the car is automatically scaled up like this. Remember, you have to have the same dimensions for all three of these cars. So for the second frame, I can always choose another background. I can remove I can remove this and bring this second frame in and do the same thing for the last frame or the last car. Okay, now that all three of these cars are set up, you can even add any title that you like. I will choose, of course, the kind as a normal text. For the font, I will give a link in the description to a free font called 9 one one Porsche and again this is a really unique stylish font which you can use on your website or anywhere on your display. The same I will copy, select the second frame and paste the same text here and just rename it to whatever you like. The same thing we'll do for the 911 and just place it in the middle. So now we have three cars, Cayenne, Panamera, 911. Now we can quickly animate. To animate these three and the transition between these three, you can either place a button that will act as a trigger or for now you will just select the frame 
click on prototype, add interaction from the top right here and under interactions, say on click and action should be navigate to. Destination can be this, destination can be the second frame so you can just drag and drop this arrow and of course the last slide will connect to the first obviously now once this is done you can quickly go ahead select the frame and click on the play button on the top right and you will get this nice little preview window now inside this if i click on kain it will change to panamera like this you can speed up the animation if you like and the same thing happens for the third one now the animation is slightly slow because I'm recording this, I have 10 other windows opened up, but mostly for most people, this will be a smooth, clean animation. You can reduce the number of pointers from the plugin and that will hopefully improve the performance. But for now, I think it's a pretty cool look, which of course you can optimize and, you know, improve and even speed up if you'd like. Okay, so for the second effect, which is of course this nice little hover effect, which you can hover over and each dot expands or contracts depending on what you like okay so for this we will create a little artboard which once again can be whatever size you like i am creating a 1920 by 1080 artboard here just to show you guys inside this artboard you can write any text so use the t key and then start pressing for example i'll press in my name now this can be any font that you like i would like something bold and straight it will the effect will be nicer so something like impact can be nice and I'll make sure everything is capital for a better effect. I can then of course style it. I can increase the space between the text. I can increase or decrease it and I can even give it colors or gradients. So in this case, I will give it a quick gradient to give it a nice style. Something, something like this. How about it? Now, this plugin works perfectly with the gradients as well. So I'm going to go to this plugins panel at the bottom and select pointillism. Now the plugin will pop up and as you can see, it creates a pointillism effect for us. Right now it's black and white. You can change it to color. And as you can see, it also follows the gradient, which is really nice. You can increase or decrease the size of the grid. I would suggest increasing the size of the grid to as much as possible and also increasing the shape size so it's recognizable, something like this. Looks interesting. Okay, so we now have something which is recognizable and it looks interesting. I'm going to add it to Figma and it adds it all the way to the top where I have all my other assets. We're going to ignore that. But bring in this right here. You can always remove the first one and bring this letter right here. Remove the background as usual. And as you can see, we have a nice little purple Puneet written here in pointillism style. Now, I can always this frame and all the vectors are then produced right here and I will center this perfectly. I always like things centered, it looks nice. Great. Now we have a centered Puneet. Now we're going to turn this into a component which will help us animate this really quick. So I'm going to highlight all of this, so just drag and highlight. On the top right you will find these options, more actions and right here I can find an option which is the second option called create component. Right next to it there's an arrow. And I'm going to say create component set. So in this case, you're creating a set of components inside one big component, essentially. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to create a component set here, which is component 2. You can rename it, you can do whatever you like with it. Once you've done this, as you can see, all the vectors are inside this. Once you've done this, you can select any one that you want. And I'm going to duplicate this, command D or control D on your keyboard and double click this duplicate. As you can see, this is called variant 680. I'm going to say hover. I'm going to call it hover from now on. Now this right now is variant 680. So remember that name for later. Press K on your keyboard and expand it to as much as you like. Okay. I'm going to make it slightly bigger. That's it. Now comes the last step before we animate. To make sure that on hover, everything should expand accordingly, we are going to create auto layouts out of all these circles. So what? So once again, Go to the panel on the left, click the first vector and then scroll down, scroll all the way down to vector one, which will be your first circle essentially. So all these circles are selected, hold shift and D. Now you need to go to the right and inside layout, there's this option called use auto layout. Click on auto layout. Now, as you can see, each one of these has turned into an auto layout. On the right, you can see auto layout is active. Now, once again, select all of these. To ease the selection, go to the top right and say multi-edit variants. And now you can actually double click and on the right, there is auto layout option. So make sure it is 24 by 24. 
or something as big as that so that hovering becomes easier for you. I'll show you why this matters later. Make sure that the space is there. Perfect. Now for the animation step, what we're going to do is select all of these vectors from the layers panel on the left. Just select the first one, go all the way down, hold shift and select all of these from here. Make sure you say command or a control on your keyboard and deselect this little guy here. Now unselect this one by holding shift and pressing this little variable which we have at the end and go to prototype, add interaction from the top right here. Instead of on click say while hovering and action should be changed. And from this long list, you must select the one which is called variant 680. Remember the name, you can always change the name later but for now I'm just remembering variant 680. As you can see, all of these will animate to this last one. Now there are easier methods of doing this, which will require you to have more knowledge of Figma, but for now, this is the easiest that I could think of. Now I'm going to exit this mode right here. Now as a last step, I want to create the final frame where the animation will take place. And inside this frame, I want to copy all of these little dots that, incl that include Purit, okay? Not this little variable or variant at the end, just select all the vectors here and hold shift and press this last vector, which is not going to be coming with us. Copy this. So just say command C or control C on your keyboard. Go to your new frame and paste it. As you can see, it's pasted right here. I can just drag and drop it in the middle. And if you observe on the right inside prototype mode, it has the hover interaction intact. So if I play this frame real quick right here, ooh, we have this nice little hover effect. You can add a little bit of animation, do smart animate, you know, add some other effects, glow effects, shadow, whatever. You can even reduce the number of little dots here to improve the performance at the end. But I think this works really well. All right, so I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure you Make sure you tag me whenever you make this and share this online. I'm, I'll show to reply there. Also like this video. That tells people, hey, this is a useful video. And also subscribe to the channel for more such content every week. Until next time, take care. God bless. Also guys, I'll have the Figma file in the description so you can always copy and paste stuff from my original Figma file. More than welcome to do that.